What's going on, good people? I got a quick video for you today. Today we are revisiting an amplifier that I just reviewed. This is the Fozzy Audio V3 that we've talked about. And I wanna just share the hi-fi deal first. If you buy this from Amazon, you are looking at spending about 160-ish dollars for the amplifier and the 48 volt power supply. With this amp, the 48 volt is mandatory. It sounds terrible with anything lower than that. The 48 volt, it's like a, a magic genie that makes the V3 sound good. So Amazon, more expensive, uh, but you do get that 30 d warranty, which I think might be worth it to you. But if you're not worried about that, go to FozzyAudioShop.com. This is $109.99 for the amplifier and the 48 volt power supply. And then you have a 20% off coupon, FAAS20. Gives you an additional 20% off. So you're looking at about $88 for the 48 volt power supply and the amplifier, which 88 is better than 160. I don't know about you, but that's uh, good math in my book. Um, and I think that it's worth it. It ships directly from China and it says it's supposed to take about 10 to 15 days, but I have found that it actually took about four days. And because I bought one from Amazon that I'm going to be returning because the RCAs are backwards, the right RCA out input is where the left should be and the left is where the right should be. Um, I'm going to be returning one of them. But in the meantime, I decided to buy amp these amplifiers into my Wharfdale Diamond 225 bookshelf speakers. Now, these are bi-ampable speakers. You can see on the back, I've taken out the gold connectors that these generally come with. The top goes to the top two go to the tweeter, the bottom two go towards the woofer. Um, and it's the exact same setup on the right side. Top two go towards the tweeter, bottom two go towards the woofer. The connectors are taken off for the bi-amp capabilities. Uh, and then I have these connected. Now, I'm not gonna pull them back, but you see here they have the pre-outs. The pre-outs in this amplifier is a fixed pre-out, meaning that it does not get impacted by the volume control on this amplifier. It'll be controlled by whatever's next, which is fine. So I have, between these two, they're connected through the pre-out with a 3.5 uh, audio output connected into the RCAs in the back. So we got your 3.5 right there, got your RCAs right here, uh, and then this is being fed by an iFi DAC, iFi Air DAC, and then I'm playing uh, music through my MacBook Air. Um, for bi amping purposes, make one amplifier, in this case my left one, is going to feed the left tweeter from one speaker output. From the other speaker, the right speaker output, it's connected to the tweeter on the right speaker. And same thing with the right, you are connecting the bottom, the woofer on the left, and the bottom woofer on the right with, so you're gonna need four speaker cables. When you are playing music on here, uh, you need to make sure that you have the volume set to the exact same setting. Now, if you had these all by themselves without a volume control on this iFi, for example, it's gonna be a little more difficult, but I just find that I turn these all the way up and then I control the volume with uh, the input on the iFi. Now you can have you can set the volume on here as well. And let me just show you something. I'm gonna lose any uh, ability to make money on this, but let me, let me turn this song on for you. So both of them are equally turned up. Volume. It sounds great. Sounds amazing. Uh, and there's a reason for that. These are class D chip amps that into eight ohms with the 48 volt power supply, it's about 115 watts per channel. So I have 115 watts 
on this going into the right tweeter and 115 watts going to the left tweeter. On this, I have 115 watts going into the right woofer and into the left woofer. So I have about 230 watts of potential power. I'm not using all the watts clearly. That just isn't how it works. Uh, but I have a lot of potential power going into each of my speakers. Uh, and the dynamics of these have considerably improved with this biamping. I actually, my wife just left this room and we just listened to music for about an hour straight uh, together and that rarely happens. But she was shocked at how much better these speakers sound, A, on stands, but also how much better they sound than what she's used to. And these have kind of unlocked some magic. 88 bucks for the left and 88 bucks for the right amplifier, $176. Is that the correct math? Yeah, $176. Then this, you can find new right now from musicdirect.com for $79. And I'm using a AudioQuest Cinnamon cable and some, and these are mono price uh, speaker cables, 12 gauge and a uh, cheap short RCA cable. But you're looking at a pretty good system for yeah these for, these are available for 250 open box 160 so 410 plus 80 490 speaker cable or this uh usb that's i mean it's 100 bucks it's kind of crazy that it's more expensive than the amp and the power supply combined uh you're looking at about 700 dollars for a system, not including the price of the computer, that sounds a great. Do I think that biamping makes these sound better? Uh, not these. These can take 110 watts of power into them with eight ohms. And these by themselves can put 115 watts. So it's a pretty good match in a lot of ways for this speaker. But for something like my Martin Logan Motion 20i floor standing speakers, do I hear an improvement? I do. And if I'm honest, it might be placebo effect. Maybe I'm doing just this just because it's a hobby and I like to see what can happen. I know that a lot of designers have just put buy amps into their speakers because that's just what the market called for and they claim that it makes absolutely no difference. Sure, they're probably right. Do I hear a difference? Yes. Is it a placebo effect? Quite possibly. But I can tell you that I'm enjoying it, and my wife's enjoying it, and my kids are enjoying it, and that for under $1,000 for speakers, amps, Speaker stands, <laughs> it's pretty freaking good. So if you are interested, please ask questions. I really appreciate you watching this video. Um, actually, let me pause one more second. What are the negatives of me doing this? Even if it does, even if it sounds better, or it doesn't sound better. If it doesn't get rid of it, don't buy amp. But one thing, you are looking at a lot more. I mean, putting four speaker cables onto something takes up a lot of space in the back. Just adding an amplifier makes it a little less clean. But these are, I don't know, these are fairly easily stackable. Would I put them on top of each other? Maybe they don't get that hot. Um, but my goodness, it's kind of shocking what we have here. For somebody who is looking to enjoy their system and they want to spend a thousand bucks, shoot, want to spend under $750? This sounds really, really good. So, that being said, if you have questions in the comments, please leave them down below. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the music.